On March 20, 2013, major broadcasters and financial institutions in Korea were subjected to cyber terror. From 2 p.m. onwards, the internal computer networks of three broadcasters and four financial institutions were paralyzed, leading to great confusion. As the computer networks of similar institutions were simultaneously paralyzed, the police saw a possibility of cyber terror and began an investigation. The Korea Communications Commission clarified that malware has been spread through the updating admin server. The scale of damage is known to be incalculable. Such failure in information security has an immense impact, causing confusion at a national level. Recently, there has even been a newly coined term, cyber war, reflecting the state where information security is considered as an important infrastructure at the national level. As previously seen, information security incidents caused by the failure of information protection are on an exponential rise. Also, the extent of damage is snowballing to an incalculable level. Information security issues are directly related to the issue of national existence, business continuity and individual privacy, rising as one of the most urgent social issues. Moreover, its importance is also growing. Let's take a look at the meaning of information security. Information security refers to the information subject's prevention of unintentional leakage, falsification, and destruction of information from internal and external threats aiming for information assets. In other words, in the entire life cycle of information, from the generation, processing, saving, to sending and outputting, Information security is the technical and managerial means and activities that provide confidentiality to prevent information leakage, integrity to prevent information counterfeit or falsification, and availability to enable the authorized user to access information without interruption. These three elements are the core principles of information security. Let's take a closer look in detail. The core principles and basic purposes of information security is to ensure the following three elements. First, confidentiality is a principle to prevent information leakage by unauthorized users and protect important information by making sure that only users authorized by the information owner has access to the information assets. Integrity means to protect information by maintaining the accuracy and completeness, not allowing illegal counterfeit, falsification, and damage when saving or sending information. Lastly, availability is protecting information from interruptions, such as the destruction or delay of information assets, making sure that the information or service is always available for use at the request of the authorized user. Please check each of the example. Information security methods can be viewed from three different aspects. The personnel and administrative aspects to protect sensitive information in an organization, the aspects of physical facilities and means, and the technical security system. The technical security method can be divided into network security, application security, database security, system security, etc. Please read the details in each of the examples. Now, let's take a look at cryptography, the base technology of information security. Encryption is a process of converting a plain text into a form where an unauthorized third party is unable to recognize the information, and decryption is the opposite process of encryption, where the converted cryptogram is restored back to plain text. Encryption was first used for military purposes, but thanks to the development of information communication and internet technology, it is now used as a method to protect various significant information. Next, we will learn about cryptography. 
The symmetric key cryptography refers to cryptography that have identical keys for encryption and decryption. Depending on the unit of information used to encrypt information, the symmetric key cryptography can be classified into stream cryptography, where the encryption unit is by bit or characters, and block cryptography, that encrypts information by block units. To send and receive information in symmetric key cryptography, the sender and receiver has to share the keys used for encryption and decryption in advance. As there could be a problem of all information being exposed at once when the key is exposed, it is crucial to distribute the encryption and decryption keys in a safe manner and to manage it well by making sure that the keys are not exposed. Next, asymmetric key cryptography. These are cryptography with different keys for encryption and decryption. This algorithm was first designed by Diffie and Hellman to solve the problem of safe key distribution. The keys used in asymmetric key cryptography consist of two pairs of public keys and private keys with a mechanism of operating in reverse relations. Through the key mechanism, the asymmetric key cryptograph algorithm also provides additional services such as authentication and non-repudiation. Let's try comparing the symmetric and asymmetric cryptography. DAS, IDEA, SEED, and ARIA, developed in Korea, are the main examples of symmetric cryptography. And RSA is a major asymmetric cryptography. Symmetric cryptography are generally used to encrypt long messages and data. On the other hand, asymmetric cryptography are used for safely sending short messages and keys. Please refer to the pop-up screen for details. Now we will take a look at hash algorithm. Hash algorithms convert variable length strings into fixed length strings, which is why it is also called one-way cryptograph algorithms. Some examples of this algorithm are MD4, MD5, SHA-1, and SHA-256, which are commonly used nowadays, and HAS-160, which is developed in Korea. This algorithm is mainly used for e-signatures, or when saving the user's password in the database. When different strings convert into identical strings, we call this phenomenon hash collision, and an attack occurs to the hash algorithm using this collision. Therefore, collision avoidance is one of the basic requirements for hash algorithms. When using hash algorithms, you must check what safe hash algorithms are recommended by professional institutions both in and out of the country. You also need to check the key length and output length of hash algorithms to ensure safety from brute attacks, which can happen at the current level of computing power. Try clicking on the button for details. Access control is the system interacting with the user to control who can access the system and what they can do. To be more specific, it is divided into three parts, identification, authentication, and authorization. Identification is a process for the system to use a unique certification to identify the subject. In other words, a process of identifying who the subject is. IDs, employee cards, biometrics, etc. fall into this category. Authentication is a process to prove the system that the subject is the identified user where the system acknowledges that the user is the valid user. In this process, knowledge-based passwords, ownership-based certifications and OTPs, and existence-based biometrics are used. Lastly, 
Authorization is a process where the system controls the authenticated user to have access to which objects and to do what. Some examples are mandatory access control, discretionary access control, and role-based access control. That is, the access control procedure occurs in a subsequence of identification, authentication, and authorization, then providing the rights to access the objects finally, allowing the system to access the objects. The following are three major models referred to for the implementation of access control systems in order to make sure that only users with the rights can access information assets. The mandatory access control model assigns security levels to the subject and security labels on the object, then enables the system to determine whether the subject can access the object according to predefined rules. Mostly used for military purposes, this model can maintain a strong security system, but the management efficiency is not as high. In the discretionary access control model, Access control for the object is based on the subject's account or the identity of the group of the account, and the owner of the object itself determines the access rights. This model is mainly used for system access control for Unix and Linux systems. The role-based access control model predefines the roles, maps the objects that the subjects can access depending on each role, and controls the access by assigning roles to the subject. This model is used in organizations that go through frequent change. It may improve the management efficiency, but may lower the level of security.